So it is, uh, this is King Louis' winter walkthrough, um, but you know, today's technically the first day of spring, so boom, congratulations, hey. you're part of the first annual King Louis' spring walkthrough. <laughs> Very special, probably a one time only thing, I don't know, exclusive. We're gonna, uh, we got a lot to cover this morning, but I'm gonna try to make it fun. Please laugh at my jokes if you don't laugh. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know if you can go home to the tour or not. I'll just have to Yeah, great. We're getting going good. Awesome. I do apologize. This is, uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the pleasure of making a lot of these presentations recently. Uh, so I apologize to Mom Rusty. Uh, I've missed being able to go to Coaster Enthusiast events, the travel circuit, and, and see all the wonderful people who love theme parks as much as I do. So bear with me. But we'll, we'll have a little fun along the way. Um, all the proceeds from today's event go to Give Kids the World Village. Um, if you're not familiar, wonderful charity um, based out of Orlando. They partner a lot with things like Make-A-Wish, and they make those wishes come true with the Give Kids the World Village. It's a truly remarkable place. If you don't know much about it, I highly encourage you to check it out online. You'll probably shed a tear too. It's really touching and it's really magical uh, what they're able to accomplish. Um, and we're so proud to be a, a partner with them and, and to contribute to that in any way that we can. So we appreciate you guys because you're part of that contribution. We've got a special all season long ticket promotion for our friends and enthusiasts across the country and really the world. Yeah, give it up. This is available um, all season long. Uh, it is a $29.95 two day consecutive day ticket and it includes free soft drinks, a stellar deal. So, um, but hopefully you don't really need to buy a ticket because you're going to buy a season pass. Woo! Yeah. Woo! yeah. <laughs> if you live within, I don't know, driving distance of here, you better get yourself a season pass because you know you're coming not once, not twice, but all summer long, right? Um, season passes are on sale currently for $54.95. includes free, uh, free parking, dollar soft drinks, loads of discounts, 20% off food and merch. It pays for itself in just one visit, but you already know this because you've probably already bought one, right? Uh, if you buy right now, it doesn't include one uh, bring a friend free ticket um, to use on a weekday in June. So every season pass you buy right now, that promotion is going to expire. The price is going to go up here soon, right around the beginning of April. So buy now and follow your friend, okay? Awesome, yeah, stunning. $54.95, don't miss out. We've got a lot of things coming back to Kentucky Kingdom this year. We're so excited and, and hopefully, you know, tired of hearing the phrase, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, we're really optimistic that with all the other vaccinations and wonderful things that are going on um, throughout the state of Kentucky and the region that we're nearing the end, hopefully, um, and going back towards more normalcy. And part of that is bringing back the fun, bringing back more fun activities. A fan favorite, the Sea Lion Splash Show in the Aqua Theater. They're coming back for a six week stint right in the heat of the summer. And I have confirmed uh, baby avocados coming back. For those of you who are big fans, I'm a big fan of baby avocados. Um, has been with us since, since avocado was born. She is now five. All of short, you gotta come check her out and take a photo with her, okay? We've also got the classic, the nostalgic. You can see it from Interstate 65, the giant wheel getting a whole new operating system. It's gonna run like butter, um, and it's gonna be fabulous. And so you and your party can ride in your own gondola. So, um, so we'll be riding that bad boy this summer. You get those beautiful views from atop the giant wheel, 150 feet tall, one of the tallest of its kind. Um, you know, it's a Vacoma. You know, we love Vacoma, right? Give it up for Vacoma. <laughs> Unfortunately, Keys to the Cancelled Kingdom has already sold out. Uh -huh. So, 
can't get tickets to that one. But Keys to the Kingdom is starts kicks off on sale today. You get five dollars off, but you gotta buy today. The ticket price is gonna be sixty dollars for a non-season pass holder, forty dollars for a season pass holder, and the season pass holders get that five dollars off today as well. Today only. Get it while it's hot. All right. Uh, we got lots of special events planned. Um, if you didn't know, I. Uh, I'm overseeing all of the guest facing operations for Kentucky Kingdom now, so I'm thrilled to be uh, kind of the operations representative um, and um, overseeing all of the revenue. So I'm personally working on these experiences and making sure that our operations team and our food services team and everybody is on point in providing something unique, special, and something only those guests are going to be able to get that day. I promise it's going to be all exclusive and it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. So buy your ticket. $5 off today only, and that's KentuckyKingdom.com slash KTTK, Keys to the Kingdom. Like I said, Cancel Kingdom already sold out. Hey, Google Bear. Let's get a picture of that. Anybody, any Yogi Bear? Any Yogi Bear fans? Anybody? Anybody old enough to remember Yogi Bear, yeah? Awesome. We're bringing that into the 5D cinema, so we've got the 5D cinema movie coming back this year. We're so thrilled to be able to. Uh, to open the theater back up in a safe and healthy way um, and offer that back to our guests. So, Movie Z Ride, uh, very special. We have a very unique theater. So, working with Cinex, it's going to be an awesome ride. I promise it's, it's a great take on the classic. <laughs> I've been, okay, I'm over, I'm in charge of food services and revenue now, okay? So, I've been in the kitchen whipping up some new things, all right? Whipping up some new things. Working with uh, Hershen's corporate chefs, executive chefs, and, and all using all their expertise and the great, you know, who likes Dollywood's food? Yeah? What about Silver Dollar City? We like those guys? <laughs> Guess what? We got access to all those recipes, all right? Don't you worry, so we're going to see what shakes out. Uh, Jefferson made me promise that I would not leak any details to you, but I promise it's going to taste really good. So you got to get your season pass and come visit all summer to try out these great treats. We're going to give you a couple special tidbits uh, on your tour today about some of the changes and things that we're doing, but we're going to make some big announcements about our menu. Um, it may not be a coaster, but I'm telling you, you got to eat, right? You got to eat. So I think it's going to be some good things. Oh, we have a question? I heard it. I have a question. Where is it? Where did it go? Question? Did I make that up? <laughs> no. 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 Since you didn't ask, we'll just say let's make sure one of the things is cinnamon bread. <laughs> oh, oh wait, you guys like cinnamon bread? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. We actually yeah. like that? Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't know that people liked cinnamon bread. Okay. Well, it tastes like dollar. Oh, okay, got it. That's how fast I understood. Give a round of applause if you're going to come buy a loaf of cinnamon bread if we put it in.
Um, so we're really excited about that and couldn't be more thankful to the wonderful leader that we've had in Ed Hart. Um, he's a pillar of this community. Um, he's an amazing business brain and he's been fabulous for Kentucky Kingdom. He's been a personal mentor of mine, um, so he definitely has a few words that he wanted to share with you guys. Welcome everyone, I'm Ed Hart, the proud founder of Kentucky Kingdom. Well, actually I'm not the founder since the park first opened in 1987 and I wasn't involved. At that time, Kentucky Kingdom was a small 10-acre kitty park with only one coaster. It was marketed as Disney comes to Kentucky, but probably went bankrupt. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that Disney isn't exactly known for operating small kitty parks. So I'm not the founder of Kentucky Kingdom, but my team and I can take credit for twice saving the park from the wrecking ball. The first time was in 1990, after the original Kentucky Kingdom had been closed for two years. We did it again in 2014. The park was closed for four years and we brought it back, but bigger and better than ever before. Now we face a new challenge. How to take Kentucky Kingdom and Hurricane Bay to the next level. How does the park broaden its brand and extend its reach not only to more thrill park enthusiasts, but also to those looking to spend a fun day together with family and friends? For me, the company that runs some of the best parks anywhere in the world, parks with something for everyone, is Hershey Family Entertainment. I reached out to Hershey last fall to gauge their interest in Kentucky Kingdom. And here we are. Hershey now has a majority stake in Kentucky Kingdom, and the park is now in their capable hands. I had three important criteria in mind when I made the decision to go with Hershey. One, my belief that Hershey is the best company in the industry to build on Kentucky Kingdom's legacy. We worked so hard to establish that legacy, and also, we wanted to make sure somebody could come along to zero in on broadening the park's appeal. Two, my pride in our management team, many of whom you have gotten to know personally. I wanted to make sure that our young and enthusiastic amuserators were placed in the right hands, especially with regard to the safety and guest experiences. And three, my desire to get a fair price, which we did. So that's it. We've reached another milestone in the history of Kentucky Kingdom. But we could never have done it without you. Your enthusiastic support of the park through social media and word of mouth has been instrumental in Kentucky Kingdom's success. And for that, and to all of you, I'm deeply grateful. As some of you may or may not know, my partner and I have produced 12 feature films. So I'd like to draw on my love of cinema to give you some parting words. And I'm paraphrasing here from the ending of a great movie classic, Casablanca. So speaking for our entire team at Kentucky Kingdom, this isn't goodbye, but the beginning of a beautiful friendship.
that are not trying to change that, we're trying to build on it. Now all of a sudden we've got more investment dollars and a powerhouse team behind us to really execute and make things happen. Um, so fear not, I promise you're in really good hands and I'm excited about the future of Pinto and Kingdom and grateful that I get to have any part in that and make it you know, even better for you guys and everybody in this community. Um, so my new boss and our new general manager, uh, his name is Craig Ross. You probably know that name. He's been the president of Dollywood for the past 10 years. Um, and he really took Dollywood um, to the next level. Um, and he, he did a great job, and he brought in many of the coasters that you love or have a love-hate relationship with, um, mm -hmm. and Lightning Rod, and um, he put in Wealth with Grove, um, and he put in a couple others as well. And it's, in his 10 years at Dollywood, I believe he added six coasters. Um, so he, you know, he's incredible. Um, he's a great guy, and, um, and he, he's very smart. And I'm thrilled to have not only the great um, lessons I've learned from Ed Hart, as he'll continue to be a mentor for me personally, but I'm thrilled for myself and the whole team here at Kentucky Kingdom to have a guy like Craig guiding us into the future and taking us to the next level. Um, so without further ado, I'll just play a little message from Craig. Actually, sorry. The Hirsch and Sizzle Reel is first. We're going to play the Hirsch and Sizzle Reel and then you'll hear from Craig. <laughs> Hi, I'm Craig Ross. Thank you so much for your interest in Kentucky Kingdom and for sharing our excitement for what is in store for this iconic park. I'm so honored to be here in the beautiful and historic city of Louisville and to help reopen the park and further develop the exceptional 30-year legacy that is Kentucky Kingdom. What you know and love about the park is here to stay. 
And I know that I speak on behalf of the entire Hershen team when I say we're very much looking forward to working alongside the community here to build a bright future for this beloved park, along with our employees and our guests. Our team really wants to hear from you as we plan for the future. Your feedback and your ideas are very important to our future planning, and we will be listening to each and every one of you. Kentucky Kingdom is starting a new exciting chapter, and we can't wait to welcome you back for the 2021 season starting on May 8th. I look forward to seeing you soon. survey available at KentuckyKingdom.com slash listening. We've got a three-minute survey, but we want to know and hear from our guests, our fans, you know, our, our <laughs> criticizers, whatever it may be. Let us know. What would you change? What would you want to see? What would you do? Um, we've got a, like I said, we've got a powerhouse team behind us now, and they're looking. They want to know. They want to know. And, you know, nothing's off the table. A dueling T4, you know, it's, it's possible. Anything is possible. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I got a few laughs. Um, <laughs> you know, we, creating memories worth repeating, that's the goal, and so that, you know, that comes in a wide variety of ways, so please take the survey, let us know, we want to hear from you, email us, call us, we'll listen, I promise. Um, you know, and in case, I'm sure you are, if you're not familiar, a lot of what Hirsch and uh, their, their way of doing things is typically extending the season, um, opening earlier, staying open through more months, later in the season, festivals, layering on top of our traditional operation style, but layering in this fun experiences and allowing uh, more opportunity and bringing more value to our season passes. Uh, so that's, I know that's the Hershen way. So I know I have a feeling some of that is in our future. Um, who would come to Kentucky Kingdom Christmas? Yeah? Woo! All right, we'll do it. If you guys are gonna come, we'll just do it. Um, awesome. And you can imagine, you know, something. Uh, anybody been to Pumpkin Illuminates? You guys familiar? Who knows? You know, we'll see. We'll see what makes sense for Kentucky Kingdom. So, um, and I would imagine that a lot of those things are in our future. That's not an official announcement, but there's a lot of things that we can do and that we can make happen, um, especially with the teams from Persia who've been there, done it, and win awards by doing it. So, we're so excited to be partners with them. And, um, you know, give us your feedback. Instagram photos and to retweet our tweets, so please do that. Uh, we need your support and positive word of mouth because you guys are the main, are some of our biggest supporters and our biggest fans who translate our message across to people who aren't from here or who have never been or don't know what Kentucky Kingdom is about. And we couldn't be more appreciative of the voice and the message that you send out on our behalf. So we're so, so thankful um, and know that we, we couldn't do it without you. And it wouldn't be any fun to do, to do what we do without people like you guys. We're so appreciative of you, and we want to hear from you and interact with you. So, um, follow me on Twitter, follow Jefferson, follow Carly, and we'll talk to you. I have a boot, I forget to get on Twitter, so every once in a while I go on a little, little spree. But, at me, follow me, do whatever. We love you guys um, and, pre and appreciate you. I'll open it up to any questions. We've got, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> ask, questions. ask the hard ones, give it to me straight. Are we, we're just like so set. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I have a question last year, but okay, go ahead. Possibly to see like a water park extension. You know, that's a, that's a really good idea. I didn't think I was like, yes. Are we due for a water park expansion? Yes. Do we have an owner operator who has money to give us a water park expansion? Yes. Yep. So you know, who knows what's in our future? So. Um, I'd be into it. I'd be into it. I got some big ideas. Um, you know, there's a couple things that we can easily do in the water park that are from, you know, a mat racer or something even more high tech. Uh, one of those slides where you slide out and you fly out like 10 feet and drop. You know what I'm talking about? Like hardcore stuff. Um, I think, you know, there's plenty of opportunities in pro slide and white water and aquatic development groups. Those manufacturers are constantly on the cutting edge. So I'm sure we'll get something nice. 
but I mean, our, our water park's already pretty big and vast. Let's be honest. <laughs> it has a minimum and a maximum weight requirement, if you go to the top of the slide with your party and you're below the minimum or exceed the maximum, you would then have to traverse back down the slide tower and pass everybody maskless and not be able to social distance. And we've got no other ability to change that flow in any way. And I promise I've looked at a lot of different ways. Um, but depending on where um, COVID guidelines and things stand, um, it's possible, you know, we'll try to open it as soon as we can this summer. I was going to say, it's possible to open it after masks. And I know there for a period of time, you know, not operating. Right, it will be possible, like, will it function and work? Like, the ride itself is ready to run. It, that's what I mean. It's yes, ready it, it's ready. It's, if, if we can get a, find a safe way to do it, and it can follow our local COVID guidelines and do so, then yes, we'll be ready. We know it's a fan favorite. It's a favorite of mine. I'm going to try to get it open. <laughs> but we got we to gotta be safe. easier concerts to start with and in this region that make a lot of sense um, doing possibly a, we've looked at doing a country or potentially a gospel in late summer depending on how um, what sort of clarity we get from COVID operations but um, I would imagine that the entertainment aspect of our business is going to grow rapidly and uh, expansively um, because we know that's something that definitely has room for improvement as our entertainment lineup. And so I would totally foresee some venue updates, venue additions, um, show additions on any of various forms, whether it be concert, live performance, et cetera, um, happening over. Maybe not this year, but it, it definitely is coming. Yeah. What about How's the operation oh. gonna, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How's the operation gonna go with the state fair? Good question. Oh, I can answer that question. <laughs> Good. So, um, you guys know Mr. Hart, right? You know he's an amazing businessman. Um, he set us up in 2019. Um, uh, we have an agreement with the uh, Kentucky State Fair Board in the, in the uh, Expo Center grounds so that our guests will not have to pay state fair admission and will not have to pay, if you have a season pass, you won't have to pay parking either. You'll be able to come to the park for normal. Uh, we will have specific gate usage. I believe it's gate two, top of my head. And we have our own dedicated parking lot that's only for our guests. So, so we'll be able to operate per normal. The state fair is likely still going to happen outside of our gates. And that'll be something that our guests can take part in if they choose to. But we'll still be able to open and operate for our regular schedule uh, during the times of the state fair, the 11 days since it's happening. So you can thank Mr. Hart for that directly. He worked very hard on that to take care of our guests. Also, did someone almost asked a, a question? Did you have a follow-up question to your question about the? Uh... Oh no. no. <laughs> okay. I'll take the. I'll take your first. Uh... All right. So we want to know how are you guys want to do with some res are you guys going to do reservations this year or? Good question. Well, we don't anticipate doing reservations. Um, of course, that could change, but <laughs> hope not. Um, I think we'll be fine given our uh, capacity requirements and guidelines, which um, 
um, are likely to be a little bit higher than what we had last year. We have plenty of available acreage. With our 63 acres, or more than 70 rides and attractions, we have plenty of room to space everybody out. So because of that, we don't believe we need to make any reservations um, to maintain that capacity. We will be monitoring internally capacity, making sure we're following all the state, local, and federal guidelines on that. But at this time, we're not really concerned similar uh, to what we did last year. Um, Hershen has some different guidelines on that, but it's also very sensitive to um, what Kentucky Kingdom guests are used to and accustomed to. So it's going to be very similar to last year. We're still looking um, and working with um, our friends at Hershen and then of course um, IAPA and some of the other parks to determine um, how do we get more capacity on our rides. Uh, to be able to get to get those lines down and so we want to load the coaster trains and, and load the cars um, so that we can get more capacity but I'm not going to release details on that until we get closer because we're trying to figure out what's going to make the most sense for our guests while also being the most efficient that we can be. But hopeful that we'll be able to have more capacity than we did last year. Make those lines go faster but still social distancing of course. <laughs> working with our brand to elevate. Kentucky Kingdom's name's not gonna change, it's got way too much history, it's way, it's way too cool, you can't mess with the, with the name, right? Um, so it will still be Kentucky Kingdom, it's gonna be a subtle change over time, where we kind of take what we're already doing and elevate and elevate and elevate. Like I can go ahead and tell you, we're getting, I'm not wearing it today, um, the KKHB, you've seen that logo probably quite a bit, where it's just a KK and HB, like that's out. <laughs> um, so looking more to include our full Kentucky Kingdom. And, and Hershey's also looking at bringing back some of our old logos um, from the 90s and early 2000s and, and modifying those, building on that tradition and that history as part of a rebranding process. Rebrand's probably gonna take at least a year or more to really fully transform to the final destination, but um, hopefully it'll be settled and you just notice it here and there over time. Yes. Okay, what would you say about like an RMC Raptor? <laughs> what would I say? Okay, you guys want to know the tea? Yeah. You want to know the tea about the RMC Raptor? <laughs> um, we were about to cut a check for the deposit for the RMC Raptor um, the first week of March last year. We were about to put the de literally ready to put the deposit down, and then a thing called the coronavirus came into the US. Wow. And then later you heard that Silverwood got an RMC Raptor that's gonna open this year. That was ours. <laughs> that was ours, <laughs> they got it. Um, but, um, you know, and that, as unfortunate as that may be, you know, that that opens us back up to what are we gonna do next? And I think Christian is, has a lot in their brain about what that's gonna be. So bear with us. Um, but yeah, nobody knows that, just a fun fact. You heard it here. So go to Silverwood and ride their ride their ride and just pretend that you're here. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, so this is more about Thunder Run. Yeah, go ahead. As okay. they get older, uh -huh. and as Hershen and as operations continue to increase, yeah. is it possible to put a second train on? Okay. Or is the or is the slamming the end of the ride on the brake train? <laughs> So Thunder Run is not currently built, like if we put one on today, is it built to run two trains? It does not have the uh, brake blocking in place to do that and the mechanisms. Can it be added? I'm, I'm sure with modern, I mean, we can go to the moon, right? Surely we can add a second train to Thunder Run. Um, I'm sure we could, what it would cost, would it be worth it? I don't know, I don't know. Um, but, uh, that's a good question. And 
I think I can tell you from an operational side, will I make sure those operators are doing everything they can to pick up that capacity? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll definitely work on every, everything that we can and, and really try to amp that up and pick up the efficiency and, and the fun a little bit too on the operational side. But anything's possible to me. You know, I'm sure our friends at Gravity Group or uh, GCI would love to do that project. Sure they can figure it out. Good question. I got a heavy question for you. Oh, wait, yeah. So, for all intents and purposes, Hershen is focused on developing theme parks. Sure. And this isn't any slight to Kentucky Kingdom, but Kentucky Kingdom has more of a flair of amusement parks. And I know that sounds yeah, uh, no, you're right. to a lot of people that's two different things. My question is, and it's probably yet to be seen, yeah. is Hershen going to develop Kentucky Kingdom mm -hmm. into more of a theme park? I would say the short answer to that is yes, absolutely. Because we are um, looking, like, in order to achieve that, like I said, the two to 92, you've got to, we, we will be in a process of becoming more about an experience. We want to create an experience that draws people in, right? We're not going to um, continue to be, um, just high thrills and cheap prices, right? That's always been us. I think we're gonna be filling in a lot of the blanks. Does that mean we're getting rid of the thrills? Absolutely not. We are still the airtime park, okay? And don't try to tell me otherwise. So, you know, but it's all about a layered in approach. So it's, you know, not only adding in a coaster, but dressing up the whole area around it, um, those sorts of things. I think it's just taking a lot of what we have, a lot of what we've done, and really kind of amp it up, um, and it's nice have somebody with, um, who's willing to put in that sort of investment to get us there. So I think um, I think over time you'll see that. You'll see that with shows, festivals, events, um, and of course new rides, areas, lands. Um, we technically have more attractions, I believe, than Dollywood has on our property, um, which is really interesting. Um, so that's the amusement park that you're talking about, where it has a lot of thrills and opportunities. But now we need to build up around that and really make it an amazing experience in and around those world class attractions that we already have. So, very good question, very astute. Very astute. Um, yes. I was wondering where T1 was at. Where T1? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's probably, <laughs> we should go to Ed's backyard. Maybe that's where it's at. <laughs> that's a good question. I feel like it's one of those backyard prototypes and then it was like, and then we built the real thing. I'm gonna call, that's a really good question, I'm gonna call it up. Oh, fabulous, you guys are too funny. Yeah, go ahead. So, can you do, like, characters, reads, anything like that, or is King Louie still gonna be yeah. the mascot? King Louie's still gonna be the mascot for now. We've got an interesting, um, King Louie's never going anywhere, I'm not gonna love him, I love him too much. We've still got all of our wonderful Halloween characters too, which very nostalgic to the 90s. Of course, not planning on all of this this year, so probably going to stay in storage for a while, but hey, you never know. Um, um, but Hershen has some of their own like in-house brands, so you saw the Chuggington and the um, Splash and Bubbles and things. I don't know. I don't know where that will take us in the future, uh, but I don't think we'll ever do anything with King Louie. Um, he's, you know, he comes with Kentucky Kingdom, and that's just the end of it. But will we expand on that in the future? I'm sure we will. Um, what about a Queen Louie, right? Like a Mrs. Louie? Like what do we Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so I'm sure we've got room to expand. I, at the current point, speaking from an operational side, am not sure if we're going to be able to execute costume um, meet and greets and things under COVID guidelines. King Louie is ready to go. Um, he's ready to come back to work. Um, but it's, um, but that's yet to be kind of determined, but I'm hoping he will make a late summer appearance, uh, depending on how things go. So, good question. Yes? Where would the raptor be located? <laughs> um, we had a couple choices. I'm honestly not exactly sure where Ed landed on it. I, we had a couple of options based on our land spacing and power requirements. I know that an area that's high on everybody's list is next to Eye of the Storm, if that, um, in that area, um, but I'm not. I'm not actually sure if that was going to be its final place or not. I know it would, could work there. 
it could have worked better. Yes? With that, you said uh, how Persians can be trying to like, dress up the Arabs, would we possibly see like re the <coughs> So I sure hope so. Um, I've been working, you know, this year, of course, like it's March. We just made this announcement a couple weeks ago. Like, is it gonna, are you gonna walk in on opening day and it'd be a totally new, no, it's gonna be Kentucky Kingdom, but are these things gonna layer in and add themselves over time? Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, it'll start with, you know, it starts subtly with signage and audio messages and then it's props and displays and all of that will build itself in. Um, I'd absolutely see no reason why we wouldn't look into lines and stations and things like that. Um, that's high on my list. Um, Hershen has a wonderful creative studio uh, that we've been working closely with on a couple of small projects. Um, but they're excellent. They're world class. They know what they're doing. And they're, they're theme park experts. So, so I'm sure we'll be able to make some of that happen. Give us some time. I promise we're going we're gonna to get there. We're going to get there. Yeah. Disney, I was told by Taylor to ask you, you're on camera, so, so you can, uh, okay. do, if, if this Save My Park documentary is still going to be shown in the gift shop. <laughs> um, back by popular demand, Save My Park documentary by Taylor Bybee from Coaster oh, yeah. Studios. <laughs> yes, it'll still be, it'll still be showing in the 5D uh, Cinema Theater alongside our uh, Kentucky Show preview. Highlights the rich culture of the great state of Kentucky. <laughs> Excellent. Good questions. Um, Do you think the free parking is going to stay long term or are you going to get just this year for the season pass over? Uh, well, sorry, what was the first part of the question? Do you think the free parking is for free the parking? For the season yeah. pass, do you think it's the ongoing thing or just this year? I think so. I think that's a very value. Um, you know, there's a good possibility in the future that we'll expand our season pass program to include, you know, for those who want a more premium experience versus those who maybe don't need um, so much of a it, all inclusive package, if you will. So, but I don't ever see that benefit not being an option. Um, you know, we've worked out, we've got a great partnership, and, and Craig is continuing that great partnership with the Kentucky State Fair Board, and they've been very helpful in the process of getting Christian in. Um, as the majority owner and working with us for that. So um, so I would see that being something that we keep as an option forever at this point. So. Yeah, free parking. Am I hear another one for me? Yeah, go ahead. All right, we're seeing in a lot of parks, a lot of older attractions are aging out and getting shut. So what yeah. attraction here in the park is aging out? Well, you already know the last one that aged out was Enterprise. And then we put it in Uh, fire, the fire engine, I don't know, we kind of low-key just phased that out on the side of the business. <laughs> just the, the fire station without a truck on it, you know, that one. Um, that one was, was the most recent one that kind of phased out, if you will, kind of aged out. Um, a few years ago, we had a kitty ride age out um, Song of Balloons. We have Up, Up, and Away now, which is like a big version of that. But the Sama Balloons used to be right in the center of Kitty Land, now it's Rock and Roller, so I'm glad you haven't really noticed any of those. <laughs> That's great. That's good to hear. I don't think we have anything on that list for this year, which I'm aware of, um, but it's something that we monitor very closely and do testing on every year and have a very high standard um, towards ensuring because, you know, depending on the plot ride, it's got a lifespan anywhere from 25 years to some 30, some 40, but, you know, at some point it just, it's ran its course, um, so uh, but we're in good shape for this year. Yes. Yeah, you've spoken a lot as to what, what kind of things are going to be phasing in and what we're going to be looking at this yep. coming year. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that we can actually look forward to on May dates that you know that has a good chance to tell us about what this you know, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> on May 8th, you'll be able to expect to see, uh, you'll get a little bit more. Probably the only adjustments that you're going to see on um, park opening, other than bringing back the giant wheel, the 5D cinema, um, we'll be able to operate the bumper cars this year. Those are a couple of the attractions we couldn't operate last year that we're able to operate safely this year with new experiences. Um, those will be back open, so if you've missed those, go get on those. Um, 
And then the other thing, I guess, would be some of the food changes that we're making. Not all of them are going to be ready to debut, uh, but everything will be, um, a lot of things will be debuting by the time the water park opens on Memorial Day weekend. Um, the Sea Lion Show actually starts the last week of June and runs through the whole day land. Do you have anything specific as to what's going to be available then? Or just, um, just we're going to have stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have stuff. We're gonna have good stuff. We've got some good food. Um, they're gonna walk you through the names, but we've got, you know, we're adding adding some. <laughs> Jefferson's gonna get mad at me. He really wants to tease about social media. I can't tell you. Uh, but um, but just a couple of the name changes. For example, we're changing triple treats up here to coffee and homes, so you can make your determination of what we're gonna be adding in with that. Um, uh, <laughs> we might be partnering with a very popular coffee retailer. I don't know. I can't tell you. But, um, um, but yeah, so just adding in a couple things that we've been missing. We've just been missing some things that we need to be doing. Uh, working on a new flavor lineup for Scoops uh, with our partners at Velvet Ice Cream. Uh, they've got some really good, um, some really good adding some more ice cream flavors. Just things like that. Um, oh, I can't. I got one. I can't. We're bringing in Icy to the park, so. <laughs> We're still at Pepsi Park. Um, so we'll be having um, Pepsi Icy's and Mountain Dew Icy's. Those are really good. Yeah. We're bringing in some um, some bottled sweet tea. We've been missing sweet tea from the menu for like ever. Uh, that's, that's been a mistake, right? But, uh, um, <laughs> Uh, we've also got like a couple really cool Mountain Dew flavors going to be sold in our retail shops, like Baja Blast and Major Mountain. Yeah, so, you know, those are some of the things that will definitely be in place on May 8th. So, you know, it's just all experience. I really oversee uh, the entire guest facing operation. So I've got rides, aquatics, food services. Those are new for me this year, but that on top of public safety, park services, our custodial team, admissions, um, everything. Which means that literally, with this listening campaign and some of the things that we're doing, you know, you speak, I listen. I promise, I will listen, and I will make it happen. And that's how that's how I like to do things. So I'm excited to be able to be, you know, at the helm of how our operators perform, our ride operators, our lifeguards, um, our food service employees, the efficiencies uh, that come with that, and the level of service. And so. I'm excited to make my imprint on those departments and those operations in accordance with you know the expectations that, that Hershen has and the experiences that they provide. So yeah. So can we see a new park entrance like we seen or anything like that? I hope so. I would love it. Um, God, what is that color? What's I forget what color it's like the <laughs> Apple Brown Betty. <laughs> of a pop, some fresh. I did a lot of painting in the off season, so if you want to know the, the name of the paint color on the buildings, just ask. I'll tell you, they're all custom. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love an expansion of the front gate. You know, I've been over front gate. The ticket scanner was my first job here at Kentucky Kingdom, so uh, very near and dear to my heart. I would love an expanded front gate or theme, a little bit more on the uh, plaza entry area. I think that would be incredible. And, and you know, definitely things that are on our list to look at and assess, and you know, they're on my list to try to get those done. Absolutely. Okay, yes. so I'm going to this. Yeah, um, go ahead. Like, you know, like we have sheets going out for the ride for handicap people. Yes. The way I see, you know, Dollywood has theirs is they, you know, after they laminate it, uh -huh. you sign it. Because if you go on water rides, the paper won't get wet. Oh, yeah, okay. So uh, I'm just very attention. You might want to think about it. You have them going to water ride. Got it. She gets wet. You might want to think about hey, they just think about the same way. Maybe we should. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Can I do it? Kind of come up with how do you get their interest to get on your tour? Like that's what you're actually here for. I understand. Yes. We had the Hershen company chef come to the park and he was like cooking us like all this food and like we were really tasting stuff and man that cinnamon bread is good. Man, okay. You know I think I'm literally living probably the best, this is literally living the dream. I come in every day and I get like 
ice cream samples and like plush stuffed animal samples. And then I got to try some icy cotton candy. And then they, as soon as we start off riding the rides, and they're like, mm, I'm going to go ride all the rides because I'm just, I oversee it all now. And it's really a dream come true for me. So I couldn't be more excited for, for how I think this season's going to go. Um, we'll go ahead and we're going to start passing out some of our, uh, we're going to get your wooden coasters out. So. <laughs>